This video adds a few additional thoughts on the ISLM model and specifically uh, I want to consider uh, the interplay between the slopes of the IS curve and the LM curve and policy and policy effectiveness. Uh, a few uh, interesting things to see and uh, we'll hop to a new page and uh, uh, put it right here in an example and I'll try to do that a little bit straighter so let's assume to start out with here just for the sake of the argument that we have a vertical LM curve we have a regular IS curve but a vertical LM curve and uh, in standard fashion here we get our interest rate, uh, our I star and Y star. As the uh, combination of the interest rate and output that uh, gives us both financial market and the goods market in equilibrium. Now, uh, so if, if the LM slope, uh, if the LM curve has a infinitely steep slope, so to speak, what does that mean for policy? What does that mean for policy? Suppose that we would want to uh, get out of a recession and uh, increase output. Now, if we would want to do that with fiscal policy here, we would shift IS to the right through a combination of an increase in uh, government expenditures or tax decreases, and you can already see where we're getting with this we are getting a higher interest rate I star 2 as a result and no change in output so uh, in this first example here we have as a result of the vertical LM curve fiscal policy ineffectiveness fiscal policy is ineffective if the LM curve is very steep. Now, there's a label for that that you might have heard. This is what we're calling crowding out. So the government expenditures uh, lead to interest rate increases that lead to reductions in investment by the exact same amount as the initial increase in government expenditures and that then is crowding out. In this case here, perfect crowding out. But you can see quite clearly that the argument applies uh, in the same vein if the LM curve is relatively steep then you would not have perfect crowding out but strong crowding out. What does this mean uh, for money demand? In this case money demand MD is very interest elastic so small changes in the interest rate lead to drastic changes in money demand uh, or let's put it like this uh, small changes in uh, the money supply lead to very large changes in uh, the interest rate due to the change in due to the slope of the money demand function okay well, that's an interesting uh, first case an extreme case uh, let's consider another one. I go to a new page and draw again a starting point. So, and as usually, I need to do this twice. So here, interest rate and output. Let's now suppose that uh, again we have a normal IS curve and we have a flat LM curve. So instead of a vertical LM we have a horizontal LM. What does this mean? Again we get an I star and Y star and if that's a recessionary equi equilibrium and we're trying to get out of it we can use fiscal policy to attempt that and we get an IS2 that in this case leads to a Y star 2 but no change in the interest rate. So in this example, we have the exact opposite result that with a horizontal LM curve, the fiscal 
policy is super effective. So the slope of the LM curve, given a normal IS curve, has a tremendous impact on uh, uh, the effectiveness of fiscal policy. Uh, we would then here say that we have crowding in, so uh, the government expenditures lead through the multi multiplier process through additional investment, no crowding out be because we have no rise in the interest rate, even though you can see that the argument applies in the same vein if we have a fairly shallow LM curve so that the interest rate rise uh, leads to a negligible fall in investment. Now in this case, um, again we can we can consider what that means for money demand. Money demand uh, is uh, very interest inelastic or to put it differently uh, financial market participants are essentially indifferent between money and bonds. Very different situation. So both these examples, interesting. Uh, we can of course now as well uh, look at a third one where the IS curve takes a particular shape. So let's assume we have a normal LM that is somewhat upward sloping here. And then the two extreme cases that we have a vertical IS uh, or a very steep IS. Okay. Let me draw it let me draw not not the very uh, extreme cases but okay so a steep IS or a very shallow IS. Let's call this IS1 and this IS2. Okay, so we have here uh, as well our initial equilibrium. In either case, I've, at the way I've drawn it, we have the same initial equilibrium with the two IS curves. And now we can say, uh, for the sake of argument, uh, we, uh, we are in a recession and we're using monetary policy to try to get out of it. So we get a downward shift in the LM curve due to the increase in the money supply and uh, we're getting two new equilibria because we have two IS curves one here and one here and you can immediately see that in for the very steep IS curve the increase in output is very small if you'd have a vertical it would be zero and in the for the case of the very shallow IS2 we have a large change in output for a horizontal IS it would be uh, the maximum possible so um, what does that mean? well in the case of IS1 uh, monetary policy is ineffective and uh, it means that investment is very interest inelastic so we cannot engineer uh, the interest rate changes necessary to get a change in demand you see that clearest if you consider the case with the vertical IS where uh, you can change the interest rate in the financial market around as you like it does not lead to changes in investment and hence not to changes in output due to the uh, multiplier process that uh, uh, means of course that we have as well uh, the case here for IS2 uh, where monetary policy is very effective. Monetary policy is very effective in this case because investment is very, very interest elastic, very I 
elastic. Now, uh, that is the situation that you know the central bank might uh, favor in a sense that uh, changes in small changes in the interest rate can lead to, uh, as you can see here, small changes in interest rate can lead to large changes in output, and so monetary policy is very effective. Now, uh, how might these different uh, ISLM models uh, correspond to political worldviews? Let's uh, put put the two different LMs mm, next to each other, and we can then think about it. So we have here a vertical LM and a normal IS, and then we have a uh, horizontal LM and a normal IS. In this model, on the left here, uh, fiscal uh, fiscal policy leads to only interest rate increases and no change in output. In this model, fiscal policy leads to uh, only an increase in output and no interest rate change. So that one might uh, want one might argue that we could label this as the conservative LM. I'm going to put this in quotes very deliberately because this must be an extreme simplification. I'm going to do the same over here and call it the liberal LM. Uh, so uh, maybe in this you know, uh, extreme abstraction we can simplify that on the conservative side uh, the, uh, the world view is that uh, uh, government expenditures or government deficits, which would be this rightward shift here in of the IS curve, uh, cannot really affect output. They can only lead to uh, a rise in interest rates and uh, possibly a threat of inflation. Whereas uh, the liberal world view is that uh, an increase in government expenditures, a stimulus program, uh, leads to an increase in output and not necessarily uh, not in this extreme case to an increase in the interest rate. Similarly, a uh, last, last example let's say that uh, we have a normal ISLM model here so we have an LM and an IS what is the effect in this model of a reduction in the budget deficit on investment? And what is the effect of a reduction in the budget deficit on output? There is a clear answer to both of these questions. First of all, uh, the reduction in a budget deficit, so a fiscal contraction, so uh, in decrease in G or an increase in T, the fiscal contraction, or equivalently reduction of deficit is represented here with a rightward shift of, of the IS and we get a new equilibrium that lies towards the left of this equilibrium with a lower interest rate. Now, uh, that means that this reduction in of the deficit unequivocally, unequivocally leads to a reduction in output. But what happens to investment? Has investment increased or decreased or stayed the same? In fact, we cannot really say. We do not know. Investment, we've argued, is a function of output and the interest rate, and in this case, uh, output has decreased so that investment has decreased due to the multiplier process but uh, the, the interest rate has decreased and so investment has increased due to that channel. Which of these uh, will be dominant we cannot know a priori. We cannot know without having more details on the, uh, on, well, on the slope parameters here. So this ties up exactly with our initial uh, discussion here between the conservative and the liberal LMs. 
let's assume that we have such a conservative uh, world where the LM is vertical. What does then happen with the fiscal contraction? Well, the fiscal contraction shifts IS to the left, which means that uh, we're moving down LM to this new equilibrium where Y is unchanged, but the interest rate has decreased. So what has happened? Uh, as before, G has decreased, and but then, let me do this in blue. In the second case here, corresponding to the blue vertical LM, uh, Y is unchanged. I'm going to put a bar over it to signify that which means that something else must have increased some other source of expenditure which is of course investment due to that fall in the interest rate so due to the fall in the interest rate uh, investment has replaced government expenditure so the share of private activity in the economy has increased and that again fits with a conservative worldview if we'd have if there were a vertical LM a reduction of the deficit would lead to uh, a one-for-one -one increase in private investment and an unchanged and unchanged output. Whereas, uh, in a normal world with uh, or a moderate world with a positively sloped LM and a negatively sloped I IS, the effect is clearly ambiguous on investment and clearly negative on output.